Moral Oral is a show that I've somehow never seen or really heard of for that matter. Which is surprising, seeing as how I used to watch similar shows back in the day, such as South Park, Family Guy, and Robot Chicken. It wasn't until I started seeing it recommended in the comments over and over that I started to become curious. Telling me that it was super dark, like Bojack Horseman on roids? Well, sign me up, I thought. So I've been through all three seasons of the show and... Yeah, you guys weren't kidding. This is a show that starts off pretty messed up. I mean, the very first episode has our main character stripping naked a grandmother's corpse, bringing her back to life as a zombie and having the townspeople devoured. Yet somehow, it manages to get so much worse than this, but for the best reasons. Going from extravagant situations that rely purely on shock value, to becoming one of the most hard-hitting, emotional roller coasters of a show that will leave you sitting there thinking, what the fuck did I just watch? So much so, that even Adult Swim eventually decided, yeah, this is getting too much, you guys are cancelled. So pour yourself a tall glass of holy water as we take a look at the controversial Moral Oral. But first, a quick shout out from this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is a turn-based RPG game for both Android, iOS and PC, who are now celebrating their third anniversary. The game started out very strong and has been constantly adding new update and game modes every couple of months. This includes the game mode Doom Tower, a magnitude of new characters to play as, and the newest and biggest addition to Raid, the Hydra Clan Boss, being the biggest and toughest boss to date. If you want to try Raid for yourself, now is the best time to start playing. As for their 3 year anniversary, they are currently running a special Deliana chase event, where you can get your hands on the brand new champion from the High Elves faction. All you need to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and the 20th of July, and you'll get Deliana absolutely free. Not only that, but when you click the link in the description, or scan my QR code on screen here, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. Here you'll get 3 champions, Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 Force XP Brews, and 10 Spirit Brews, in which you can collect your rewards here. But wait, there's more. As for new players, once you're in-game, just enter the promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything, plus 50 XP Brews to instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. So just click the link in the description, or scan my QR code on screen. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, now back to the review. So what is Moral Oral? Moral Oral is a stop motion TV series which aired on Adult Swim from 2005 to 2012. Hey, it's stop motion so you know it's going to be fucked up. The series was created by Dino Stamatopoulos, I bet I absolutely butchered that, and centers around a 12 year old boy named Oral, an enthusiastic Christian child who lives with his father Clay, his mother Blaberta, and his no. bratty younger brother Shapey. The family lives in the fictional state of State Sota, in the fictional city of Moralton. Moralton is a heavily religious city, with most of the residents being devout Christians, who regularly attend church and denounce the ways of evil such as homosexuals and science. I thought 4% of the universe is made up of atoms Tommy, and... can't you listen? But I read in a book well, that... I read Dracula in a book. Oral, who has been strictly brought up on religion since the age of four, is a strong believer in God and will do his best to be the best darn Christian he can be. Mm. This will often lead to him taking proverbs far too literally and inadvertently end up committing horrific acts in the name of God. For example, in one episode Oral is told that it's a sin to masturbate as every sperm must be used purely for making babies. Sperm is there for procreation, not recreation. And so rather than stop masturbating, Oral instead decides that he can still masturbate and go to heaven by making sure that every one of his sperm is put to good use, which involves sneaking into people's houses and impregnating women while they sleep. Oh. Yeah. Now obviously this show focuses a lot of its humour around religion, but upon watching it I actually think it's less poking fun of religion itself, and more so just certain people who adopt it. 
You have those like Oral, who although a good person at heart, will take religious teachings far too literal, and ironically will end up committing vile acts because of it. Kind of like that South Park episode which comes to the conclusion that religion should be treated as a form of guidance to become a better person, but should never be taken too literally. Stories that are meant to help guide people in the right direction. Love your neighbor. Be a good person. That's it. But we also see how it is the people's usage of religion that causes bad things to happen. For example, in that same episode of Oral Impregnating Women, the only reason he does that is because his dad can't be bothered to explain the truth of where babies come from, so uses a make-believe story as a lazy way of educating Oral. And as we'll see later on in the series, many of the people of Moralton aren't quite as sin-free as they'd like others to believe, and we will see at how they'll use religion to mislead, corrupt, and gain power over others. The series creator even addressed this in a Reddit thread in 2012. Quote, The root causes are lies, laziness, and hypocrisy. Everything horrible stems from those three things. The show is not about blind faith. It's not about faith at all. It's about the lack of it. Season 1 of the show is actually pretty basic, and most of the episodes will follow the same formula. Oral attends church and hears of a moral teaching from the reverend, Oral takes this teaching far too literal and proceeds to cause horrific acts as a result of it, Oral gets in trouble and goes to his dad's study, where he is spanked and given arguably an even worse life lesson from his father. All a woman really needs to be happy is a few little hungry mouths to feed and some dirt to clean up. Really? That's it? Yep. With the closing scene often ending with his dad's trousers falling down, due to him previously removing his belt to spank Oral. It's by no means a terrible story structure, but when you're like me and you're binge watching through all the episodes at once, it does start to get pretty mundane after a while, with even the shock humour starting to become a bit numb on the senses. Season 1 is definitely the weakest season of the show, which is both good and bad. Good in the sense that the show goes from strength to strength, so if you're enjoying the first season you're in for a good ride, but bad in the sense that a lot of viewers may get turned off earlier on, and will end up missing out much of the better stuff. But do I recommend skipping over season 1 and just starting with season 2? No, and there are several reasons for that. First up is that even though season 1 doesn't have as much depth as the other two seasons, it still does have moments which begin to plant seeds for later story development, Thanks such as the, the failing sympathy. marriage between you Oral's parents, Clay's conflicting sexuality, and how Shapey may not be Clay's child. It looks like everybody wants a piece of me lately. But more importantly, the show's creator stated that he wanted to quickly establish these characters with shallow depths so that we could later unravel them as the series progresses. Quote, I wanted to quickly set up these characters as two-dimensional cartoons, then gradually reveal who they were and why they did the things they did. So I think in order to get the full impact of the later seasons where things become more in depth, you do need to watch season 1. It's kind of like Bojack Horseman. Season 1 is what I'd say is the weakest season of the show, but you still need to watch it as this is what sets up its characters. And most importantly, season 1 of Moral Oral ends on a really strong episode, and that's the Christmas special, titled The Best Christmas Ever which is the first episode that gave a glimpse into what the show's true potential could be. The plot itself is nothing too special. Oral learns of the second coming of Jesus for when Jesus will return to the earth, and after overhearing his parents arguing that Clay doesn't remember conceiving Shapey, Oral gets the idea that this must mean that Shapey is a miracle child, and so treats him as the Lord and Saviour. But because Shapey is an angered brat, all he wants to do is break stuff which involves him and Oral destroying a nativity scene. But that's not the main focus of this episode. The Look main the focus is actually today. focused around Oral's parents. This is the episode that confirms that Shapey is not Clay's child, and so we see the two fighting because of it. And for the first time in the series, we see more of their flawed and vulnerable sides. And we get some really hard-hitting moments, such as when Blaberta is sat alone on the bed, there is no sound, or even music, just silence, as we just watch her sit there. The episode even ends on a down note, as Oral is told that his parents will be splitting, and so it ends with him putting his hands together and looking up into the sky, 
hoping that everything will get resolved, where once again there is no music, and the episode ends. This is the episode that marks the shift in moral oral, from a wacky episodic genre to a darker, more story driven show, which would begin to divulge deeper into its characters. And I must admit, had it not been for this Christmas episode, I may have just stopped watching the series altogether, as like I said, by this point the show was beginning to feel formulaic, and I felt the shock humour was beginning to wear thin. But this episode showed me that perhaps there could be more to this show after all. And boy was there. Why do you quit working on me? Season 2 picks up a few months after the Christmas events, where we are told within the first minute of the episode that Clay and Bluberta have decided not to get divorced after all. You and Shapy are still young, needy, impressionable children. So your mother and I have decided to stay together. Wow, great cliffhanger there, guys. Though the divorce is no longer going through, it wasn't because Oral's parents worked out their differences, but more so that they wanted to keep up appearances. The last thing we want people to think is that we don't care about our own kids. That's one fact that is none of their business. So even though the cliffhanger was resolved, the underlying problems in their marriage still remains, and will continue to play a part throughout the rest of the series. Though parts of season 2 still seem to mirror the format of the first season, the subplots planted in season 1 do begin to develop. We start to lean more focus on the side characters in the city of Moulton, with Oral taking more of a step back. I think this was a good decision on the writer's part, as now we get to see the seemingly flawless people around Oral actually carry a lot of problems of their own, helping flesh out the world a lot more, and shows the contrast of Oral's innocent and oblivious nature to all the depressing and corrupt stuff going on around him. Stories are definitely becoming more interlinked, with episode 18 in particular featuring a lot of callbacks to previous episodes. And there's this incident through the season where an identical family move in next door, but when they move away again, the two younger brothers get swapped, and it stays that way for an entire season. Oral also happens to fall in love with the neighbour's daughter, Christina, which will be focused more on in season 3. Overall, I'd say Season 2 is an improvement over Season 1, and like with Season 1, Season's 2 highlight has to be with its finale, with the two-part episode titled, Nature. The plot focuses around Clay wanting to take Oral onto a father and son hunting trip. Though his dad is keen, Oral is a little more hesitant. When at the nature reserve, Oral is struggling with the idea of killing an innocent animal, all whilst the dad is becoming increasingly frustrated, and intoxicated. As the evening rolls around, Oral becomes uncomfortable with how much his dad is drinking, and suggests that maybe they should just call it quits and go home. We then see Clay begin to have a breakdown, as he talks about how much he hates his life, with all of his marriage insecurities we've seen building up throughout the season, suddenly spilling out onto the surface. Oh god. What's the matter? I hate myself. With his dad going on an emotional rampage, Oral becomes uncomfortable and frightened. Holding the gun in his hand, Oral accidentally pulls the trigger, where part one ends. Dad! Part two opens up right where we left off, and it turns out Oral didn't actually shoot his dad like we were led to believe, but rather his last two bottles of alcohol, which only ends up driving his dad into a further fit of rage. What's interesting here is that this is the first time we see Oral stand up to his dad, and also the first time that Oral has looked upon him in a negative light. It's because you become a bad person when you drink! Previously, despite all his dad's obvious flaws, Oral still admired and respected him as a role model. But now, he sees his dad for what he truly is. A sad, broken alcoholic with a history of repressed issues. Eventually, Clay ends up accidentally shooting Oral, but even at this point, he is so far gone that he doesn't even care for his son's welfare. It hurts, Dad. Well, it's supposed to. Pain is nature's spankings. Not only blaming Oral for what has happened, you've got to learn to be more careful, son. But even going as far to not apply the disinfectant alcohol to Oral's wound, and instead just drink it. It's at this point we see Oral finally realize what his dad is as he utters out the line, I 
hate you. After this, his dad passes out, and a bear attacks their campsite. Orville is forced to kill the bear in self-defense. When his dad finally awakes the next day, he seemingly has no memory of the night before. Clay asks if Oral was the one who shot the bear, and in order to deny his dad any sense of pride or happiness, Oral answers, No dad, you killed it. Huh, I did? We then cut to Oral back at home, where Oral talks to his mom about how Clay changes when he drinks, and his mom's response is, Oh, he doesn't change, Oral. That's just his true nature coming out. The episode then ends on a silent note, and thus brings season 2 to a close. Wow, talk about ending your seasons on a depressing note. I'd say that this season 2 finale is one of the top episodes of Moral Oral, not only providing a satisfying payoff for what's been building up in the season, but unlike with seasons 1's finale, the events in this episode actually go on to have an impact in season 3 which is in no doubt the darkest, and in my opinion, the best of the series. It's at this point the show has fully progressed from an episodic structure with wild and zany antics, to a much more linear, character-driven show, which focuses on a much darker and more serious tone. What's interesting about this season is that the first set of episodes actually take place before the season 2 finale, and proceed to move further back in time as the episodes progress. This offers an intriguing new way of storytelling, as normally we'd see Oral's day start off as normal, and wonder how wacky and dark his shenanigans are going to end up. Whereas now, we see the results of his shenanigans first, and then we get to see the events that led up to them in the following episode. Nothing like the blood of the innocent to keep away pesky plagues. Oh, it keeps pass away? That and the wrath of God, which is handy. Which is like much of the theme of season 3 as we get a lot of flashback episodes, which includes Clay and Roberta's marriage, showing us that they didn't necessarily marry out of love, but more so out of necessity. Roberta wanted a life like the rest of her friends, and Clay just wanted someone to make him feel validated. So, you know, I should keep you. What I found interesting on this watch is that we find out it was Bloberta who introduced Clay to alcohol. And the reason for that was that this is the only way that she could communicate with her own father. So she applied the same logic to Clay. We also get a look into Clay's past, showing at how he was an overly spoiled child by his mother, but after her death, felt invalidated, and in a twisted sense, started to get satisfaction over his own father hitting him, because he associated the beatings from his father as a sign that his dad cares for him, perhaps explaining his strict discipline with Oral. But the standout episode for season 3 has to be episode 4, titled Alone, which according to the creator, this was the episode that was, and I quote, the final nail in the coffin for Moral Oral. The episode doesn't focus on Oral or his family, but rather three female characters who have appeared throughout the show, Miss Sensodol, Nurse Bendy, and Miss Sculptham. We'll start with Miss Sensodol, who up until now wasn't too much of a character, other than she loved to protest practically everything, hence her name, Sensodol, and had an odd affiliation with eggs, particularly fertilised ones. You've got to smell them, feel them, oh, crack them up. Previously, this was seemingly done for pure comedic gross out, but after a conversation with her mother over the phone, we learned that Miss Sensodol was actually sterilized at a young age, and thus had her eggs removed. My lack of eggs is not a hindrance, it is an asset! Don't push me down like that when you did this to me! Turning her obsession with eggs today away from being comedic and more tragic. We also get hints of Miss Sensodol having this plan to take over the city, Apparently this was to be fleshed out later on in the show with her actually succeeding, but with the show's cancellation, this never got to happen. Then we have Nurse Bendy. Again, throughout the show, not much has really been shown of her, other than that all the men tend to find her hot, and that she's slept with a lot of them. Here though, we see her life behind closed doors, and despite appearances on the surface, we see that she's actually an incredibly damaged individual who yearns for a family. 
and so has created a make-believe one with two bears, playing her husband and son. Things get darker, however, when the husband bear falls onto her, which causes Nurse Bendy to break down in distress, showing us that she holds deep emotional trauma from being sexualized by men in the past, and perhaps even hinting at a violent sexual relationship from a previous marriage. And finally, we get Miss Sculptum, who is Oral's teacher at school. This is arguably the darkest and most twisted of the three stories, where I think even just talking about it is going to edge me on the side of demonetization. As we see into her apartment, it's strongly indicated that she's just carried out an abortion on herself. This was due to her recently being raped by a guy named Mr. Creepler, which has clearly left her with a lot of trauma. But what really starts to get messed up is that she starts feeling guilt about how she got sexual gratification from the experience and even starts to fantasize a romantic relationship with her attacker and goes through a further breakdown when she hears that the attacker has died in prison. Apparently, there was going to be a follow-up episode to this to further explore her trauma, but with the show's cancellation, this obviously never got to happen. It was at this point that Adult Swim decided that the show was getting a little too dark and controversial for its liking, so told the team that the show would be cut short and that there would be no further seasons. Now the thing is, you can argue that Adult Swim had the right to cancel Moral Oral because of the direction it was going, and perhaps it was getting a little bit too dark for its own good, and exploring territories that even other animated shows at the time wouldn't even dare touch. But the thing is, the show never treats these issues as comedic or as a laughing joke. It takes itself incredibly seriously and offers some great visuals when telling these stories. And although it can be uncomfortable to witness these events, I do think it's important to showcase them. And I must admit, I do find it a tad ironic that Adult Swim was fine to have all going around impregnating unsuspecting women when it was played off as a joke, but when the whole subject is turned serious, now suddenly it's deemed unacceptable. But they did at least allow the team to finish up the second half of season 3, which gave the writers some attempt to conclude the show. Now I don't want to go into spoilers here, but I will say that this sudden rush to end the show becomes obviously apparent, as new plot elements are introduced and just don't seem to go anywhere. Plus the last 30 seconds of the final episode, though offering closure for the series, does kind of spring out of nowhere and I really wish we'd seen more episodes to better explore how we get to that moment. One thing I do want to point out though, is that even though this season is incredibly dark, it isn't a total downer, and there are some refreshingly wholesome moments within it, such as the bond Oral and Coach Daniel begin to form towards the end, and this interaction with Steph and her dad the Reverend at the end of episode 9, where he talks about the love between Oral and Christina and how it is different from Steph and Kim's relationship, Steph assumes that this is because they were lesbians and her father hates that, but her dad responds, No, because she never cared about you. Oh, wow. That was actually a really nice moment. It's honestly a shame that season 3 was where the show got cancelled, as I think this is where it was really starting to hit its stride, and I would have loved for it to continue on its world building. Though season 3 marked the cancellation of Oral, there was actually another 20 minute special which aired a few years later in 2012, titled Before Oral, which acts as like a prequel to the series where we follow a younger Oral who is now only 4 years old. We see how he briefly stayed at his grandfather's house and had a really nice time there, and could have possibly had a chance at a decent life should he had stayed. Apparently this is the direction the show would have gone had it been allowed to continue, with the creator stating, if we do get another season, I would like to keep exploring younger Oral. First off, he's cute as a bug. Secondly, we would get to be informed on other characters' origins. Like, for one, what were the events around Stephanie's first piercing? Honestly, with adult animated shows today like Bojack Horseman and F is for Family, which show that darker storytelling can be popular amongst audiences, I think if Moral Oral had come out now, it would have fared much better. I wouldn't mind seeing this series getting rebooted so that it can pick up where it left off. 
Realistically, I don't think that will happen, but you never know. With old shows such as Kids Next Door potentially getting a reboot due to online fan support, maybe the same could happen here. I guess all we can do for now is put our hands together and have a bit of faith.